PTF here before today's show. I want to ask you for a favor. We've got our 2021 listener survey out there in the world. This is a chance to do a few things. Uh, you're really helping us out by uh, giving us information about who our audience is, but you're also helping shape our content with the way you respond. Uh, plenty of areas in there to, to go off script and, and tell us whatever you want to tell us as well. We'd really appreciate it. And as a thank you, we're going to give away a $500 bet this summer to one uh, randomly drawn person who fills out the survey. Easy to find. Uh, it's pinned on my Twitter if you want to go there. But probably the easiest thing to do is to use our cool little pretty link. Go to inthemoneypodcast.com slash survey. We really appreciate your help. A lot of responses coming in, but uh, we need more to continue to bring you the best content we can. Check it out, inthemoneypodcast.com slash survey. Hello and welcome to the In The Money Players podcast. This is our Father's Day edition, I suppose. Thursday, June 17th, we record. We're talking about the races of Saturday, June 19th. I'm your host, Peter Thomas Fornital, back with you in the Brooklyn Bunker once again. We've got a trio of guests, a little bit. Actually, that's not right. A quartet of guests. Um, we're doing three different segments, though. We're going to start things off with a very familiar face we'll get to in a moment. Then we're going to have uh, both John Pinder of InTheMoneyPodcast.com and Spencer Lugenbuehl celebrating the 100th episode of Redboard Rewind this week. We'll talk about that as well. They're going to do the Lone Star Late Pick 5. And then we're going to wrap things up with our man, Drew Coatney. Um, we'll be back right after this. Today's show brought to you in part by our friends at Naira and Naira Betts. We have it up on the screen now. That is the America's Day at the Races TV coverage this weekend. You can always find that schedule yourself, www.naira.com slash TV schedule. Also want to remind you that Naira Bets have weekly contests with a $300 buy-in and cash prizes. Registration ends each week, Friday at 5 p.m., so you'll want to be aware of that. And last but not least, Saratoga tickets. They're now on sale. If you go to the Naira website, poke around on there, you can find out where to get the season passes and the individual tickets will be on sale pretty much any day now. Go check it out at Naira.com. First up on the show, we have the usual co-host of this program. You know him, you love him. He resides in the planet Texas and around here he's known as the people's champion, Fox Sports's Jonathan Kitchen. JK, what's up? PTF, what's going on? Uh, getting ready. Getting ready for Saratoga. You know, uh, Andy always says on the show that he doesn't want to get ahead of himself and he wants to enjoy Belmont, but uh, I'm ahead of myself. I'm looking forward <laughs> to Saratoga. So um, I feel like every day I wake up and I start thinking about, oh, well, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this and that and the other? So it should be a lot of fun. It's going to be a big meet. We've already got plans cooking, some really fun stuff we're going to be doing with the TRF. I have a new TRF idea, by the way. And you're wearing the perfect hat, and I have the perfect hat here to demonstrate. So how, how about this? So we've got this hat. Let me see if I can do this without knocking anything over. We've got this hat, the old Brooklyn Bunker hat. You've got the perfect, you know, model there to create the color scheme, to create the Planet Texas hat. What if we do them, like, limited edition, not for sale, but we'll give them to people who make a certain – donation like maybe somebody doesn't want to give the 200 to get the whiskey you know but maybe they're willing to give 100 or whatever and, and they can get the fresh hat what do you think i like it <laughs> i'm never upset about uh about a little burnt orange in circulation i don't really follow baseball but we're doing well i think we're in the world series oh well, that's good that's very good that's 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 as good as it gets i would imagine i didn't realize they were at that time already i do enjoy college baseball but i must admit not at the top of the list of sports i follow I would put horse racing on the top of that list, JK, and that's what you're here to talk about today. We're going to do two segments. We'll start off talking about the Naira pick six, the Belmont pick six, the $1 pick six, specifically on Saturday. And then we'll just do a very quick uh, chat about the Santa Anita stakes. We've got uh, three of those on Saturday, closing day Sunday. I'm going to do a special show on the plus side with Blake Jesse about the mandatory payout 
on Sunday? Is that a pool you imagine yourself participating in? Um, typically, I, you know, I've gotten to a point where I, I try not to like lock myself into having to play sequences. I don't like just because they're mandatories. Very smart. I mean, obviously, obviously it's something you have to take into account. If you're going to be playing seriously, you have to take advantage of those positive expectations or at least those uh, de facto reduced takeout wagers. But, uh, but I also, I, if I'm in there and I can't make any decisions, I don't have any strong opinions. I, you know, I'll try to try to uh, kind of uh, work away from it to a certain extent. We say all the time, uh, and you know, as important as takeout is, as critically important as it is, nothing in horse racing for me trumps game selection. So if you don't got the opinion, don't play. Uh, and they're not, I don't even know if they're drawn yet, but uh, I have a feeling you'll find some opinion that's worth trying to leverage in, in that spot. Not going to see the great race place for a minute, but not here to talk about that yet. We are here to talk about this Belmont $1 pick six on Saturday. Kicks off in race number five. I'm on Thursday in my notes, but I was right about the kicking off in race number five thing. I just knew that the time was wrong. 302 Eastern. We've got three and up. 12 dime claimers going six furlongs on the dirt. JK, why don't you kick us off here? Yeah. Um, you know, I like the, uh, um, I'm getting, I'm gonna have that number problem today. I, I like the three Cecilia Mike. Um, this is a horse that I thought ran extremely well last time, completely missed the break, still got a speed figure that's competitive with this group. The race two back after breaking a step slow also, uh, went well. And I, I just feel like this horse, is is the one that I wanted the most in here. And he was eight to one on the morning line. It's one of the advantages sometimes I think of handicapping before you see the morning line, you, you can kind of get yourself tied into a horse that you think will be shorter. And when you see the morning line, it's 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 kind of like uh, waking up on Christmas morning. Um, the great Dansky I'll use defensively, who is the, uh, let's see here. Hey, the, you just uh, say the horse, horse. You say the Got horse it. names and I'll recap at the end. Okay, perfect. This is a horse that, that has some speed figures that fit. Um, has been running for ten now, up for twelve. Uh, that's a little bit of a of a of a nice uh, suggestion that maybe this horse is going to run better. It's been switching barns quite a bit, so I wanted to make sure I had the horse just at least defensively, maybe more of a B type. Uh, the nine combination uh, is one that I wanted to have for sure. Um, this is a, a horse that switches to Rob Attress's barn. I think he does a phenomenal job, especially when horses are moving into his care. And then the 11 strolling was another one that I wanted to use. And, and look, uh, there's no other reason other than Orlando Noda. Um, you know, a lot of times he'll get on a hot streak and he stays on a hot streak and horses outperform what the paper suggests they will. And, and, and I'm surely not going to get caught uh, staring uh, when he crosses the finish line first and he's screaming his head off in the winter circle. Because <laughs> you know that's going to happen. We have a lot of the same numbers. I put the nine combination on top. Winning kind, going out for a barn that does well with new acquisitions. 11 strolling. I thought there was a, I thought there was a, a handicapping case here as well. Taking a slight drop, being suited by the apparent amount of pace that signed on, I thought could benefit, especially if the nine gets really mixed up in that pace. I feel like if the nine can sit and and pounce, that's a winning trip. If not, I think this thing could melt down. That could bring um, the likes of, of strolling into it. That could bring the likes of number four, tail of mist into it, I thought, at a very big number, much more for underneath, but a horse that I'd mentioned. And then I think you're also uh, – Onto something potentially with your number three, Cecilia Mike, as a horse that could benefit um, if things go too crazy up front. Lots of ideas in uh, at least a semi open race to kick things off. Let's move on to race number six. We've got three year old New York Preds at the stakes level going seven furlongs in the New York Stallion Series. I was interested in number one, Show Me the Honey. Got caught, I thought, chasing uh, a fairly even pace in a stake last time. Thought there was more speed around in this spot, too, that could set up a late run from her. The three shaker shack was one I wanted to keep on side. Might be better on turf, but just based on blood. And I thought could prove to be um, the best speed, especially if the presumptive big favorite doesn't handle the sod. That's number 10, Ava's Grace. Lays over the field on figures and form, I thought. But this is a new test on grass, and I wasn't sure on pedigree if uh, she was necessarily going to want it. So I was going to go with the one and the three uh, on the A line and the 10 as more of a defensive use. How do you see it, Jonathan? 
Yeah, it's one of those. This, I'm seeing the morning line for the first time. I looked at these races last night, so I didn't. I didn't have the morning line, and I changed the color of my pin on my iPad to circle the one show me the money or the honey. I I, I love this horse um, for lots of different different reasons. This is a weird race because it's a stake, but you you start clicking through. There's you know proper grammar, maiden claim, broke your maiden uh, maiden claiming sport model. Got a fast number, but broke the maiden, maiden claiming. And, and that kind of is the theme. Like, there's not a lot of standouts in here. And then you got Ava's Grace, who's got the name and was on the, the Kentucky Oaks Trail. So I think people will, will probably play her. But, you know, I mean, she's not screaming turf. I mean, she's got the Uncle Mo influence. So obviously they know, you know, they'll run on turf a little bit. But she doesn't have to to, to run well here. And you know she had to take some time off between – uh, between the Kentucky Oaks, from what I understand, she was scratched for a physical reason going into the Oaks. So she obviously had to take some time. So now I feel like they're building her back up. Then they're going to switch her surfaces to go seven furlongs on the grass. I mean, she can win. She probably will. She might, but I, you know, I love the one in here. So I'm going to press the one as an A. I'll use sport model as a B and I'll use a uh, lot of honey towards the outside as a B and uh ava's grace as a b so you know I, I i look i love the the one show me the money from those that two-year-old form um you know ran well on debut at seven to one uh for michelle nevin who doesn't actually run her horses don't run that well first out all the signs point to i think this horse is going to run a good race from the inside uh, that's our both of our top pick for sure. You've got a honey thing going on with a lot of honey in there as well. I've got you the one is a clear A and the four, nine, and ten as your backups in that one. Let's talk about race number seven, three and up claimers, 40 dimes, mile and a sixteenth on the inner turf. And JK, we'll keep it with you. Yeah, this race, let's see. I I wanted to start with um I'm just going to go in, in in order. I don't have a I don't have a love in here, so I'll just go in post position order. Um I like the 3 uh Clear Vision. This is a horse that needs some pace, but um but if you look back, there's some class and some uh there's some class situations there. I'm not crazy about the fact they tried to run this horse longer. A lot of times to me that's like an indication of like a slow horse. It's like, oh, this horse isn't fast enough to win going a mile and a 16th. So let's try, you know, two miles and a mile and a half and see what happens. Um, but if you go back to those to those shorter races, those numbers were competitive with this group. Um, attentive, noble thought, and mandate all kind of feel like the same horse to me. Um <laughs> And looking at the past at the past performances, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the um, morning lines. You got attentive who's five to two. You got noble thought who's six to one, and you got mandate who's twenty to one. And I, like I said, I feel like they're similar horses. Like they're basically the same horse. Um, I'm going to use all of those, and then I'm also going to use the eleven if it draws and off the also eligibles. Vittori Kin is a horse that ran well. Um, has nice figures. And like I said, when I look at those numbers, that that kind of that quicken number, you look at kind of the pace scenarios. You look at the final figures. I, I couldn't separate those horses. Like I said, I, they they feel very very similar. So I'm going to make sure that 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 I have all of those. Um, a couple of B ideas uh, for speed are the seven and the nine. The seven Mo Gotcha and the nine um, Smile Brian. I, I felt like you probably wanted to have those horses defensively. Uh, there's the Nota factor with Smile Brian, and then on Mo Gotcha. Uh, it's, a, it's a horse that, that has a little bit of tactical speed. Uh, one last time on the dirt, although I felt like that was probably a perfect trip for that horse. The race two back from a speed figure standpoint kind of fits. So if this horse gets loose, could be one of those horses that beat you. Um, so I'll use those as bees. This is a spread race for me. These horses all feel the same. I'm going to go ahead and make it just as a token top selection mandate, just because you're making a cogent case for, for a 20 to one shot, but I'll list it out 10, three, five, six, 11. And I'll mention the seven and nine as bees. I started in the same place you were, and maybe I just forced myself to, to start splitting hairs and, and, um, moving horses around i ended up putting attentive on top i just felt like this is a runner who's in good form and should get a good enough setup on the slight drop in this spot what i wanted to mention and that you didn't mention who's not as big a price on the morning line as i was thinking uh he might be but i'm still going to stick with is number eight street copper this is another bit more for underneath type 
in that uh, this is not exactly a win machine, three for 25 with eight minors, but this is a tactical horse in good form with numbers that fit. And I was thinking he might be good enough to at least take down the seven and nine, who you mentioned as the presumptive speed and we're going to back up with and maybe set it up for something to come off. And then the other one I definitely want somewhere is number three, clear vision, um, especially in that scenario where this pace heats up a bunch. This is a horse I think could be heard from late. I agree. Clearly uh, not exactly a brilliant type, does does most of the running after the turn, which can be dangerous, but does come home fast. And if they go too fast, I think clear vision could be the one to benefit in this spot. Let's move on to race number eight. We've got a starter allowance going one mile on the dirt. And I liked Indian Counselor the best. This one did not fire in the slop last time, but I thought fit very well off the previous efforts. I really like the stalk and pounce trip that I see happening here. We've got number four, Top Gun Tommy. This horse is low-key famous, JK. You know what I'm talking about? Top Gun Tommy. If it has anything to do with, with Tommy Masses, I can understand why. <laughs> No, this is the horse that Paco was riding uh, on the day of the fight with uh, with Irad. <laughs> but in truth, this horse's run uh, I thought was pretty good that day and then has a couple of works coming back off the layoff. I thought Top Gun Tommy was another one to keep on side. And then Risk Profile, I felt like, had a chance to be the best speed, especially if he can build off the improvement he showed last time for the new barn in, in George Weaver. I was going to go five, four, and six. Is it that simple, or you got something else in here? Um, yeah, I mean, I thought the six was interesting, risk profile. Um, this is an interesting, you know, aside, and I'm, I'm assuming George doesn't care that the, the story comes out, but I think part of the reason George claimed this horse is the fact that, that Chad kept running for Maiden Special Weight. And I think George's idea was is that if the horse obviously had some talent, um, because – you know, Chad will jam one in there when he has to, if the horse isn't very good. And I just felt like, uh, you know, I think George felt like this horse had some talent and then he shows up and he runs that big number protected for George in a maiden special weight. Um, just changing up how things go. I, I think risk profile is extremely live in here. He ran extremely fast. He would be my top pick. He would be an a horse for me. Um, and, and the rest of them, you know, it's kind of the same situation. They just kind of feel like they're all the same horses. Uh, I thought my first Grammy was okay. Horse had a wide trip last time at a big price. I thought ran well in the slop, but I worry that that kind of jump up and figure came from the slop. So that's more of a B type for me. And then um, the other one I wanted to use was Wicked Indeed. Uh, this old horse that the Canter Marcy's took from Steve Asmussen. And, and I think they do a great job. Um and although they're on a little bit of a cold streak through Belmont, I, I do think that they do a phenomenal job. They're over 29 for the meet, but they do better than that. And, and, and so uh, it's kind of like when you walk by the roulette table and it's been black, 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 black. And then those, the person that said it's going to be red. I mean, we all know that's ridiculous logic, but I do feel like the Canter Mossies are going to win a race eventually. So maybe it'll be that 30th one. I'm sure they have one earlier in the card, but you know what I'm saying? You, yeah. I mean, the truth would think that gambler's fallacy is that, that, it, it, it is a fallacy that the next one is due, but if you look at the next 10, I would expect it to regress to the mean in their historical performance. And I, I would imagine, you know, who knows also with as important as the Saratoga meet is to them, uh, maybe these aren't the, the, the these aren't their, their their best horses or whatever. Maybe there's their spots picked out and and plans afoot. I, I agree with you. I wouldn't I wouldn't let that cold streak necessarily put me off with uh, with those connections. So your thoughts, just to sum up with numbers in race number eight, you wanted to put the six on top, and I'm going to list the ten and the two as backups for you. And uh, yeah, and, I'll, and I'll use and I'll use Indian Counselor. It's not a love or like thing. It's a use. It's just that the horse deserves to be used. Um, but you know, like I said, I'm not cutting in line to single the horse or anything like that. No, I mean, I mean, it makes sense. This is a horse who's going to catch money. If you, if you, if when you're looking at this field, you're you're seeing them all the same. You're not going to be cutting in line to bet. Uh, you know, be, you, I should say all the same, except for your clear top pick. You're you're not going to want that then necessarily to go crazy over the second choice. But if you can think of smart ways to include in certain combinations, you're going to do that. I'm going to drill more into just the, the the five, four, and six here, and, and see if I can't uh, see if I can't get lucky. 
going to be doing my Father's Day celebration on Saturday, JK. I'm making everybody take the boat down to Monmouth with me again. We'll be betting uh, uh, Belmont and Monmouth from the parterre boxes down there. It should be it should be uh, should be a hoot. You got you guys have any uh, any special plans for Sunday? No, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, uh, no, I don't know. I haven't even thought about it. I guess it is. Uh, I guess it is. Uh, uh, you know, it is time. So I better figure something out. Do you have to work or you, or do you have the day? Yeah, I think I'm on, I'm on at some point during the day. I don't know that I didn't see the schedule yet, but yeah, I'm on at some point. Yeah. See, when I have to work, I got to do like these six hour shifts. That's like the whole day. You, you could do your like three hours or whatever and still have some fun. Yeah. I think it'll probably be like three at some point. I think we're on from 1230 to six. So I won't do the whole thing. So yeah, we'll have plenty of time to do get into some trouble. I think we're going to hit a water park on Monday. So We'll, oh, uh, we'll call that the reverse reverse uh, <laughs> Father's Day celebration. I like it. I'm doing mine Saturday. You're doing yours Monday. It's, you know, whatever works. Let's talk about race number nine, my friend. We've got uh, three-year-old New York bread stakes action one more time in this spot, and I will throw it to you to kick this one off. Yeah. Um, in this spot, I liked the three Thunderbird Cafe and the four Ocala Dream. Uh, the three Thunderbird, Thunderbird Cafe. It's the type of horse that has that kind of even running style going six stretches out to the seven. I like that. What I mean by that is that the pace figures and the final figure are, are, are kind of in the same neighborhood where it 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 feels as if going longer uh, will actually help because the horse has shown a consistent ability to be able to kind of run the same speed going six. Now you're going seven. It makes a lot of sense. So I, I, I like the three Thunderbird Cafe. And and to be fair, it would likely be my top pick. The four Ocala Dream. This little horse I think is interesting, but I, I just never have been uh, someone who loves these cutbacks. Um, although it's a mile and a mile of 16th cutting back to seven, it's not some drastic situation, but I do think it makes a difference. And especially a horse that kind of comes from out of it. They're going to be a lot further back. They're going to need pace and likely they'll get it with these young horses, but uh, it's a horse that I'm going to use as an A, but I, I, I'm not crazy about. Um, the Six Dreamers Disease, this is the same kind of idea I think we saw earlier with Ava's Grace, where Diodoro's taking a chance in these turf sprints with these Lao bands uh, because of the uh, of the condition of the, the New York bred stakes. But this is a horse that actually has some back numbers that suggest that maybe the turf is going to work. Horse broke his maiden on the turf, did it in wire-to-wire -wire fashion at Ellis Park with a nice speed figure back when uh, this horse was a two-year-old. So I think this colt could improve now as a grown-up, well, not a grown-up, but a three-year-old, and, 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 and kind of find some of that. So it's another horse that I'd want to use um, as an A. And then, you know, for whatever reason, obviously we're never rooting for weather, but if there is weather, I, I love sinful dancer. I've always liked him. I know George has always liked the horse. I thought he was going to win, uh, on debut. I thought he was going to win when he came back in the second start. And I thought he was going to win on the turf. Um, so I, I think this is a, a talented horse. And if he happens to draw in, he's a type of horse I'd single in multis, even with dreamers disease staying in. Well, Sinful Dancer, looking at the weather, probably not going to be participating. Um, but maybe that's one that people can put in their stable mail. Who knows if Sinful Dancer comes back uh, on the dirt in, on a day when we're not doing a show. If you have that in your, your stable mail from DRF or Equibase or whichever one you use, you can, you can have that sorted out. I put Ocala Dream on top. I, I think I like a bit more than you. Uh, I've just thought all three turf starts have been pretty good and just looks like an improving horse who I thought would get a, a pretty good trip um, at a trip you can usually close with what I thought was plenty of speed signed on. If the speed holds together, I think you identified the right one in the six Dreamers Disease. Same reason. Ran that really big number on turf as a two-year-old. If this horse can somehow build off that and get loose, could be a handful in the lane. One I'll mention that you, uh, that you did not mention is the 13-step dancer. I thought was much better last time, and I felt like had the license to improve again in the third start off the layoff. That brings us to our nightcap. We've got a quarter maiden claiming Philly and mayor, New York breads going six on the dirt. JK, how are we going to get paid? Yeah, I really like the 12 in here. Maria's gift to the outside. Um, I like horses that have tactical speed drawn outside in these lower level races. I, I think that when you're looking at a maiden special weight horse, and you're looking at a maiden claimer. I think the difference typically between those two horses is their ability to carry their speed, their ability to start and stop, 
and their determination. I think those are the three things that that those three attributes are what make a maiden claimer uh, or a, a maiden special way. Um, if you're drawn to the outside and you're in the clear, you take that equation out. You take the the start and stop out of the equation. If you have speed, you also take out the determ- the, the determination because you're in the clear. You're not having to really overcome any adversity outside of losing ground. And while the other ones are stuck in behind, trying to start and stop. Long story short, I like the twelve a lot to the outside. It's a horse that I would kind of single A press. Um, I'll also use um, Know It All Red. It's a horse that I, I thought ran well enough in, in, in at times throughout the career and and uh, the tried the maiden special way two races back then found the friends for 40 now i'm sorry for 25 and now runs back for 25 so this is a horse i thought i would include i don't love definitely a b type for me but i'll, I'll probably single a and maria's gift towards the outside i, I think that horse is going to be really tough to beat thought the same way uh, definitely a strong preference for me you made a great uh, case I think the horse is going to get a great trip. Manny Franco, so good, especially with speed types in dirt sprints. I just think this has him written all over it. I was going to maybe try to tell you a story about the two Obladi, who we talked about um, the last day back on on May 30th. Things all went wrong there uh, in the slop. But I thought maybe getting back onto what should be dry dirt uh, with some pace figures to run back to maybe gets ignored in the betting. Maybe you get a double digit price not just a beatles hunch play obla d for me in the last at uh at belmont any other thoughts on this belmont car jk or should we take a very quick uh journey out west yeah i mean you could have given me 187 tries i would have never got that was a beatles reference so <laughs> i told you the last time we were we were on we were on the show and the thing mm. ran <laughs> yeah I just, people say beatles i, just, I guess i stopped listening i don't know well, yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> but remember, this is a chance to make up for lost time, JK, because we got understandable guff. Because the last time it came up, we started talking white album and, and black album and, and gray album, and you uh, you forgot to give uh, you forgot to give the right props. Yeah, I forgot it was Danger Mouse. I mean, I look, I del- I downloaded the darn thing illegally back when Napster was happening, so <laughs> I knew it then. I just couldn't remember it. <laughs> A Napster reference. Pay, cash your uh, 11,500 to one if you had that there would be a Napster reference on, <laughs> on, on today's podcast. Let's head out west real quick, JK, so you can uh, get back to, to the little guy. Appreciate you uh, carving out time for us here late week when you have so much other stuff going on. We go to race number nine, 823 Eastern for the Snow Chief Stakes we're looking at three-year-old Calbreds going a mile and an eighth on the turf. I'm boring, so I'll go first. I really like none above the law, number two in here. Felt like this horse was uh, pretty obvious. Did get a setup last time, which I noted, but I think there's a good chance that number two, none above the law, is going to get another setup in this spot. Uh, I'm okay uh, pinning my colors to that mass with uh, Miller and Pratt number two none above the law for me in the snow chief how do you see it yeah I mean I definitely wanted that horse it looks like that's gonna be a pretty fair pace in here it looks like they're gonna run a little bit but in turf sprints uh I'm sorry not in turf sprints but when horses are stretching out from turf sprints I always feel like they have a shot in, in, in potentially wiring the field. And so I wanted to make sure I used play chicken uh, as, as a horse that is forward enough that could get dangerous, could get loose, is a nice price, drawn towards the outside, doesn't have to go, can see what's going on inside of play chicken. And then the other two speed horses that I thought were dangerous were in Jest and Jimmy Blue Jeans. Um, they're all nice prices, right? 15 to 1, 15 to 1, and 12 to 1. Those are the type of horses that get loose in California and, and can go the distance. Jimmy Blue Jeans, uh, had nice enough pace figures last time with a nice final number. And the same with ingest, um, nice enough pace figures, nice final number. So now look, and now if all three of them go, then obviously none of these three opinions are going to be worth a darn, but I'm hopeful that one of them can get loose. I want to have tickets with those three horses on there as well as none above the law. Who's obviously the most likely winner. How would you grade those runners, the two, nine, six, and seven into A's and B's? I mean, it, or use them all. It, it depends. It just depends on the rest of the sequence, right? Like, I, I mean, I'm going to use those equally. Um, I'm obviously going to want the A. I mean, the 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 none above the law more. 
Um, so there's probably a world in which I would just single a none above the law, then use those other three speed horses as B's. But it also depends on the rest of the sequence, which I haven't looked. I mean, except for these three races, I didn't look at the rest of it. So gotcha. it depends on 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 how that all unfolds. Makes sense to me. Let's if you have, on. you know, if I love an eight to one shot in the in the first leg of the pick five or the first leg of the uh, pick four or whatever, then I'll use all of them as A's, right? Just to try and, and hope that you could beat none above the law. But um, you know, I typically am a single A, none above the law type. Let's move on to race number 10, the Mel Air Stakes, three-year-olds again. Um, this time we've got the Phillies going a mile and a 16th on the dirt. I like number six, Eddie's New Dream, best in the spot, thought made a decent return to the races in an allowance race that actually came back up pretty quick for the level. I thought could move up off that and get a good stalking trip in this spot. I did also want to use number five, I'm So Anna, who I thought might have a little bit of a class edge and could be the best speed, has not done the best work on dirt, but going through those races, I think some of that might be circumstantial. I did want to keep on side. So I was going to try to get out with the six and the five in the Mel Air Stakes. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I like the one quite a bit, Pawnee on the inside. It's a horse that's gone the two turns, um, tactical, nice speed figure. Uh, when, you know, when you're looking at some of these other ones, like Eddie's new dream, he's going the two turns for the first time. You never know what you're going to get there. looks like he'll be fine in that situation. He's fast enough, tactical enough, and the, and the speed figure suggests that he'll be okay. But I, I want to definitely have Pawnee as an A horse as well. And then I'll use Fifi Farrow as a B as well. That horse is five to two on the morning line, but did win uh, last time going two turns, broke the maiden going two turns, keeps Humberto Raspoli. Speed figure wasn't quite up to par with the one and the six, but is competitive enough that if you think this horse continues to improve second time going two turns, I think he'll be dangerous as well. I, I think I think she's an interesting one as well. And I did look long and hard at the one and three. And after your endorsement, I am going to go ahead and include them on the B line. And we'll just look to press my six and five a little bit more. Let's move on to our nightcap. It's the grade three San Juan Capistrano. One of my favorite named races of the year. A mile and three quarters on the turf. With a hundred thousand in the spot in the pot, cool race with the the two last winners of this race being here to reoppose. I sided with number two, Red King. I thought he could maybe go back to back. Plenty of back races, fast enough. Excuse for the last race, which I thought it was likely maybe just needed, and I've just felt like the added ground brings him forward maybe a little bit more than some of the others. I can't get beat by Acclimate, though. Uh, won this two years ago. Had the opportunity to control things up front. I was going to use the two and the four in the last race at Santa Anita on Saturday. Who's your idea of the winner? Yeah, that's all I need is a two and the four. Best closer, best speed. Acclimate, obviously, can can get out on the front end and be dangerous going the mile in three quarters. Um, it, it doesn't always uh, hold on. But I think that going longer is better for him. The mile and a quarter, maybe funny enough, is maybe a tad too short for him to really do his thing. The mile, obviously, two races back is completely out of the question and ran well enough that day. I think the mile and a half, mile and three quarters is exactly what this horse wants. The longer, the better, where that speed is really a weapon. So Acclimate will be the top pick, but Red King is another one who – We'll get enough pace to run into with Acclimate doing his thing on the front end. And I think Red King is probably the 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 the, the one that is in in a full field in a in an honestly run race would be the one that I would want. But I'm afraid that Acclimate's gonna get loose. I'll use both of those horses as A's. All right, lots of agreement on today's show. JK, thank you very much. Definitely uh give a high five to uh, the little guy for us, and we'll be talking to you very soon, my friend. All right, guys, thanks. This show brought to you by our friends at Monmouth Park. I had so much fun down there last weekend. I'm going back this weekend. I, I mentioned it with JK. I'm going to have my Father's Day celebration be part of it. going to have uh, my mom come down as well. We're going to sit in a park there box. We're going to bet Monmouth and Belmont, and we're going to have an absolutely great time. One pool that I know Monmouth are very interested in uh, promoting this meet, the early pick five, win early, win often. That's a good one to check out. And if you're in the area, if you're coming to the area, think about making a trip down. I'm going to be taking the Sea Streak Ferry 
uh, the, the boat ride, the commute, instead of being a bug sitting in traffic, becomes a feature uh, getting down there to Highlands, New Jersey, then booking a car to take us on to beautiful Monmouth Park. It's going to be a super fun day for us, and I encourage everybody to check it out. For more information about the Monmouth Park goings-on, you see it right there on the screen now. Go to monmouthpark.com. Next up on the show, very happy to have not one but two guests to talk about this Lone Star Late Pick 5 on Saturday. We'll start off with returning guest who has made some fantastic contributions over the last few months over at InTheMoneyPodcast.com, a noted contest player himself and another Planet Texas guy, John Pinder. John, how are things? I'm great, PTF. How are you doing, sir? Doing very well. We're excited. I've been talking about it all show about our, our Father's Day plans. You guys, you guys have anything uh, cooked up for this weekend? I don't. My kids and my wife aren't letting me do a thing around the house. It feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy it. Enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> <laughs> very true. And also uh, very happy to welcome a man who uh, made quite a milestone this week from an idea that was, I think, brainstormed. I don't know if it was in the Saratoga backyard or maybe it was even at the paddock bar, but you know, a lot of people have ideas and talk about them and then you know they never come up again. This guy took the kernel of an idea and, and planted it and it has blossomed. We just had the 100th episode of Redboard Rewind. I'm extremely proud to be of help on the In The Money media side to Spencer Lugenbuehl. How are you, my friend? I am good. There is no place I'd rather be than with El Presidente and uh, Mr. Picto over there himself. <laughs> oh, it's it's going to be that type of segment, I say. Oh, it is. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Let's dive into these races, gentlemen. They kick off at 545 Eastern on Saturday. Uh, race number five at Lone Star Park. We've got three and up Texas bred allowance runners one mile on the turf. We'll, we'll kick off with the, the, the semi birthday boy. That's you, Spencer. Who do you like in here? So I'm trying to take a different approach now to my uh, pick four and pick five. I'm trying to single earlier because I feel like a lot of people want to stay alive in that first leg. So I'm actually going to go with number eight, Paul Paul's boy. Uh, Ray Luke Gutierrez coming down from Naira now is 24% at Lone Star. So obviously wasn't the worst rider up in New York. If he's 24% down here for Carl. Uh, Broberg. I just think this horse, the last two races, slight nice improvement, 62 to a 70 in those last two turf races. And also the fact that I think a lot of money is going to come in on the number two, John Doe, for a horse that I don't think is really that much better. So I'm just going to try and single Pawpaw's boy where I think people will use both of them and uh, get some plus EV on my side. All right. I like the I like the theory. We'll see how it uh, how it plays out. John is a uh, Spencer on the right horse in this spot. Hey, no, hey, no, he's not. Hey, dude. <laughs> you, that was too easy. That was a softball. You threw that right down the putty. Um, I actually, and it's so funny. Anytime Spencer and I handicap and, and do shows together, it's it's like we're the exact opposite. He's yin and I'm yang. I, I see the race very similar. Lots of money going through the two, John Doe. Uh, but but I'm going to try to beat him, and I'm going to try to beat him with the other boy in the race, Nana's boy, not Papa's boy. Um, I, I think... <laughs> Granted, I'll give Spencer, you know, just a little bit of credit, not much. But but the horse is, is very – he's very alive. I just – I wasn't impressed um, for, for the morning line odds. He's a lot like the two for me, just not spectacular. Definitely could be there. But but uh, looking back, I wanted to go with uh, Mindy Willis in this spot. She's been she's been doing really well. And uh, an angle that I've started to look at is owner-trainer um, and – this one, she's got two in here, um, and this is her horse. Um, so I anticipate that, uh, you know, she, she'd spot her own horse well. And then the other horse um, in here that uh, that she's training is the number five, Truly Dancing, uh, would be my second pick. This is a homebred operation that she's been training for with uh, Carolyn Burnett, and um, they're, they're winning at a pretty good rate. And this horse just broke... Uh, broke his maiden last time out in impressive fashion. And uh, if he can get anywhere close to that, he should be at least competitive. So the one in the five for me, Pete. A couple of big prices on, on the morning line there. Uh, everybody trying to beat the favorite. Huge opportunity for a good race call with Nana's boy and Papa's boy in there. Maybe they can get into into a, a stretch duel or something and, and 
and we we can uh, we can have a little bit of fun with that in this uh, in this spot. Pretty funny name combination for this uh, for this Father's Day weekend. Let's move on to race number six. We've got three and up claimers at the fifteen thousand dollar level, going a mile and a sixteenth on the dirt. John, we're going to keep this one with you, so Spencer can mock your pick this time. <laughs> I'm sure he'll do a great job at it too. Congrats too on Spencer. If I don't get get around to it on the on the hundred show, that that's great, brother. I'm proud that. of you. Appreciate um, it. And this one, Pete, I, um, number one is, is taking a big drop here. I, I've kind of this my same philosophy with the, the first race in race five. I'm going to try and probably do throughout the sequence. This is going to be a, a prohibitive favorite that that could get the job done. But I'm going to look to try and and uh, and get cute or get spicy with, with another one. The uh, the favorite in this one that I would uh, lean on would be number one, private junction. Um, hasn't been able to finish his races, but he's taken a big drop. And uh, that last turf experiment, his last time out, just just wasn't good at all. So he's getting back to the dirt, and um, and with the drop, I think he should be able to to at least outfinish these. If he doesn't, I like the three big Mac Daddy, and uh, that used to be one of my nicknames. If you guys didn't know that, <laughs> um, but this horse um, also he caught a muddy track last time out, and so he um, if rain permitting and it's it's just extremely hot down here in texas so anticipate that the track would be uh would be fast on saturday and uh if he gets a fast track i'd look to him to get back um back into the the speed figures that, that made him look competitive two and three back october surprise the favorite you're looking to oppose in the spot it sounds like yes sir all right spencer where do you stand with uh, the morning line favorite october surprise and the rest of this field in lone star sixth on saturday i am also going to pass on the favorite and uh it's it's i don't know if big mac daddy was your nickname or if you love mcdonald's but uh <laughs> it's, also, it's also my uh my top pick as well which is surprising how we're so different but i just i think it's fair the last race throw it out in the slop they're trying to serve who knows what was going on and you get right back to that 57 with the lower uh the lower winning percent jockey, but that can only help your price in a lot of time. And this one is being 12 to one on the morning line. Definitely want to use this one. My other a is going to be pirate junction. Uh, another thing, like we talk about, we're looking for different imbalances within the past performances and first time tag, I think, you know, is something that is just super interesting, obviously has never faced horses like this before. And if the drop works, the horse will probably be claimed claiming a win is always good for certain barns. Pirate junction, my other a, my lone B, the number five, Georgia Deputy. I just think based off of the last couple of races, if I think the 57 can win, why can't the back-to-back 59s, two and three back also win this race? So plenty of agreement there. You guys are not living up to billing with your with your with your with your fighting. You've got and, and no favorite too with the the three and the one, and then Spencer giving a little bit of love to number five as well. Let's talk about race number seven. We've got Phillies and Mares, nickel claimers going five and a half on the dirt. Spencer, how are we going to get through this leg? I think for me, just looking at the number one sworn silence again, Ray Lou and Carl Broberg again, solid race last time off, first off the claim. Carl, I think, will improve these like he always seems to do. The one does seem to be a bit of a nibbler, seven seconds, six thirds, so not the only one I also want to use. Give me the seven Apollonia off the layoff for Dallas Keen. That, or I'm sorry, just not off the layoff, uh, the the claiming 4,000 race last time out seems like this one's getting back into form and, you know, 11 for 24 in the exact isn't too hard. Little mini layoff there with yeah. the, uh, the, the 57 days depends on, depends on how you look at the world. So um, you, you, if one half of the entry scratches, would that still be your top pick or how, how are you looking at if, the? If um, for me, if, if either of the uh, entry are, I'm fine with it. Okay. Sounds good. John, how do you see this one? Well, we see Spencer's back to his uh, his ways, and and we're we're back on the opposite end of the spectrum. In here, I could not get around the the two uh, probably morning line, and we'll be starting time favorites. Um, number five, lucky every day. This horse has great early speed, and he's in form. He's dropping slightly, and uh, the trainer combination of of uh, Robertino Diodoro and Ramon Vasquez has just been 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 on fire so i couldn't get around number five and then number three pick up the phone 
spell with an F. I, I looked at that for a minute. And I was like, what? Is, ah, that's what that is. <laughs> and uh, and here again, I, I could kind of leaning on my my trainer angles again. This horse is trained and owned by one Steve Asmussen. So um, he sh he's shipping in from Louisiana and uh, he was he was competitive, not very competitive there, but those were uh, stronger races. So bringing him in over to Lone Star. Uh, with his other horses, I think that's the that's the angle for me here. I see it a little more like John, just off the pace scenario. Lucky every day being clear uh, on the pace projector on time form US anyway. With pick up the phone, looking to get a pretty nice run potentially in behind. That that's uh, that that looks that looks about right to me from from where I'm sitting. But we'll we'll, we'll see. We'll see if Spencer can maybe have a say in this. You you don't get to a hundred podcasts without knowing a thing or two. So maybe he'll make us look bad, John. Probably not, but we'll give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to race number eight. Three and up Philly and Mare allowance types going seven and a half on the turf. John Pinder, we'll keep it with you. All right. And this leg, I've only got two. I've got one A and, and then a backup B. Uh, Chikara is a consistent mare who's been improving with every start for Broberg. Her last two, uh, slightly higher class le level. And this time she's getting more ground to run over. Those two were at five and five and a half. Uh, today she's getting to, to use that late kick a little bit more going seven and a half. So I think uh, she's the one in here for me. And then back up would be, um, again, I'm trying to look for something if, if not to be chalk chalk, but to throw in uh, someone who has a shot with a little bit of a price. Number two, dress shopping. Hasn't been to the races for more than 10 months. And I'm like, why, 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 what, why? I couldn't figure this out. I kept looking at the angle. Um, great trainer, again, in, in, in one of my other picks in uh, Diodoro. Um, and he knows what our place runners. You can just look at his percentages. But this horse was was with his string in Houston back in March. Never got to the races. Then brings him over to Lone Star. And she's been there since forever. So now in this spot it's like okay maybe 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 now that he knows that the the horse is ready to go so all of that to say i'm going to throw in the the two dress shopping as a as a backup here yeah it's not he can win off the layoff but it's not like something he's known for i suppose there's a world in which she needs the race but if the six to one of the morning line comes to fruition uh, i would be inclined to to keep one in that you spent that much time thinking about spencer how about you where are you in this spot I am uh, with the top pick. It's going to be number two dress shopping. I agree with everything that uh, John said. Just Robert and Diodoro, I feel, you know, this horse. Remember those words, people. You don't hear them often. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to write it down, too. <laughs> uh, just winning impressively three of the last four. Just missed last time out. Slowly improving the buyer figures. Last two were on the turf. Uh, obviously, likes to win fresh. One in the June 25th race. So I see nothing wrong with the layoff. And. Chikara as well. Relu, Carl, we know my story so far. It's just kind of what it is. Small drop in class. Since the uh, claim from Calhoun, just I think it's slowly, slowly getting better. And one that I don't want to leave off my tickets. I am going to have to add the seven in as my third A. Stuart Elliott, Steve Asmussen, just another one. The, the first race off the layoff, I mean, showed speed and faded a little bit, but still ended up being third. That's always, you know, you kind of lose the pace battle or win the pace battle, but lose the war. I don't want to leave this one off. All right, let's move on to race number nine, the anchor leg. We've got babies, two-year-old Texas breads going five on the dirt. Spencer, how are we going to get paid? I think this race is super difficult because when you're trying to find a first or to beat these horses that have experience, they only have two or three workouts, and a lot of times that isn't enough foundation for a lot of people when they're trying to play. I'm going to go with Stan's Golden Path as my top pick. Austin Gustafson obviously knows how to get him, get him around as two-year-olds. Big, big bullet work. I'm going to take something out of Benny South Street book where you see that bullet uh, from the gate specifically as the last workout can be a very positive angle. And I'm just going to use put a bling on it as well. Just fastest last out buyer. Caldwell is not the best second time out. And I know he's actually not the best first time out either. So running second, I guess, is a bit against the grain. But I want one more just to uh, appease my thoughts in this one. Five and eight for you to close things out, Spencer. Did I have that right? Yes, sir. All right, John. What do you think? Uh, where, where are we going to uh, where are we going to go to get paid in this last race? Let's go with. We can't get away from the eight. I agree with Spencer. Um, I, I, this race is super super difficult, and when when it comes down to that, like one of my 
things to do is, is to turn on the replays for the, 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 the babies that have had a couple of races and just see how they performed, put a bling on it was, was like a monster away from the gate. She backed up a little bit towards the end, but if she can improve her stamina, um, I think, you know, she's, she's going to win hands down, but if she doesn't, um, for me, the other three that I do in here. So I, I take four, number seven, expect the boss, um, didn't, this horse is coming in from Churchill last time running against a uh, tougher company. There was no convergency away from the gate. She just didn't, didn't do, she made a big metal move and then flattened out. So that to me, if she can come away with a, a little bit more, you know, umph and be ready to go, um, expect her to do better. And then the, the last two again is, is my trainer angle. This time it's with uh, Danny Pish. He um, will, Will Burns, classy lady, is uh, is my potential long shot. Second time started, didn't break well again, and then came running from the clouds, I think, to get fourth. And then the other Danny Pish runner, Faster, is, uh, is a first-time starter, I believe, who's teaming up um, the owner-breeder team there. They've had good success in the past, so he doesn't want to disappoint um, the potential people on the team there, so. That's my angle there. So Faster looks a little bit interesting. I mean, Pish is very good with the firsters, so I, I do not mind that as a throw-in whatsoever. A little bit of precocity in the breeding. And I'll just underline your case on Expect the Boss. This is a horse that caught money against Maiden Specials at Churchill, now coming in to face Texas Breads, and did a little bit of running the first day, too. Got bumped at the start, made that middle move, flattened out understandably. I think Expect the Boss is very interesting. I definitely would not be leaving uh, leaving the seven off of my tickets in that spot. There you have it. There's the, there's the Lone Star pick five, done and dusted. Before I, I let you guys uh, get out of here, Spencer, you're, you're 100 shows in now. What do you have planned for the next 100? What are you, any, uh, any other uh, new ideas, upcoming guests you're excited about? What can you tell people to continue to get us pumped and build on this momentum you've started? I, uh, I really want to start getting more involved with the fans, and I also want to start, I think you may have talked about it, just having, you know, uh, not the video idea, but so much just where we take photos or, you know, little screen clips of PPs and like how certain people are circling certain angles and blog posts maybe to accompany the shows, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. I'd love to help you out with that. And maybe that's a chance to get things a little bit more interactive in a in a comment section or or something like that. I think it's uh, I think it's very cool. I'm I'm uh, I'm encouraging uh, encouraging of that uh, very much. How about you, John? We got to get you doing more more stuff on the network. You got any uh, any other uh, tracks you're you're looking to do some written coverage for? You did a fantastic job covering Gulfstream for us. Any other ambitions in racing, or or should I quit while I'm ahead and just bother you when I need you for these Lone Star shows? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, the summer's summer's heating up. Of course, the you know all eyes will be uh, on on our brother and JK in uh, in up at Saratoga, and then. Um, you know, surf by the turf at Del Mar and then with the Breeders' Cup being there. So I'll find somewhere to 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 plant my feet and and do something here over the summer. So if you got any ideas or got any holes, you you let me know. We'll brain we'll brainstorm. We'll do a we'll do a we'll do an actual production meeting not in the middle of the show and we'll we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that very soon. John Spencer, want to thank you both uh, so much. And uh, we'll, well, I should also just mention that Spencer doing a great job also doing the Lone Star shows on Saturday, on Fridays. We've had Nick Tamaro doing Sundays. We've been interjecting some fun Monday content. So look for him there as well. John, a frequent guest of his. And I, as you can tell, I'm very amused by them as a team. So uh, keep up, <laughs> keep up the good work, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Pete. Yeah. Thanks, Pete. Like all our shows, this one's brought to you by our friends at the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation, our founding partner. They mean so much to us, and we want to help them raise money so they can keep their mission going. One way we're doing this is by offering some cool incentives for you to buy. I was talking before to JK about the idea of making the Brooklyn Bunker and Planet Texas hats. Well, right now what you can do is buy our new whiskey. They just arrived. Finally, we got the labels fixed. They're ready to go. Four-year-old rye aged an additional four months in an apple brandy barrel. 
tasting delicious like a cocktail in a bottle. I think if you like uh, spirits, you're really going to like this one. Some fun cocktail things you can do with it as well. If you have any questions about that, hit me up. I'm happy to share some ideas. I think you could probably make the world's most delicious Jack Rose with this stuff. Maybe even do some homemade grenadine to go along with it. Anyway, please donate to the TRF. If you donate 200 you, we will send you as a free gift uh, this whiskey trfinc.org slash players. That's the URL you want to go to. I'll say it again because I said it weird. trfinc.org slash players. Last but not least on the show today, we go to our regular correspondent for all things Woodbine. He is Drew Coatney. Drew, how are you, my friend? I'm doing good, Pete. I'm doing good. Uh, summer's in the air. We got our first weekend of Woodbine under our belt. Did some great handle numbers. Uh, on Sunday, the third highest bet track in the, in the Intercontinental, I'm assuming. So fantastic for Woodbine. Big, big fields on Sunday as well. So all sorts of great betting opportunities and can't wait to get stuck in on Saturday. I like it. Making up for lost time up there. That's what we like to hear. And of course, you can read your work over at InTheMoneyPodcast.com. And those looking for more info on Woodbine, I haven't run this by the, uh, the, the newsletter editor, Tyler Wisman yet, but unless things go dramatically wrong, we're going to start a new feature, folks looking to get more of Drew's intel, as well as some of our other writers' intel as well. Going to be including an early week newsletter with various horses to watch. That's something you can look forward to. You can sign up for that at inthemoneypodcast.com slash email. The late week email will also give you links to all the shows and let you know what's going on uh, as well. So a good thing to do, inthemoneypodcast.com slash email. Now, normally, Drew, we go over these late pick fours. I know you and I both like to play a lot of doubles when it comes to Woodbine, but today... We're going to go over the late pick five and how appropriate that I'm even wearing the I'm alive in the pick five T-shirt from our friends over at Old Smoke. These are actually for sale, as are several of our other designs. If you want to check that out in the moneypodcast.com slash Old Smoke. Do you you see what I did there? I did. I did. And and if if we're saying those words come Saturday evening, I will be ecstatic uh, because I think we have some price plays in here. Well, let's talk about the first leg, the one that we don't typically talk about. I didn't even look at this race, but I know you said you had a strong fancy in here. Uh, Don't keep it to yourself. What do you like in this uh, allowance race going a mile and a 16th on the synthetic that goes at 5 o'clock Eastern time? Yeah, so there's been two horses I've been scouring the entry boxes trying to find. One of them's in this race and one of them's in the next race. I think both are trip horses, both have fantastic upside. So for them to be sandwiched on the same day next to each other, it's almost like it's a sign. Uh, <laughs> you you got to play. <laughs> be careful so, about those signs, but I do I do take your point. Uh, and, you know, you don't have to scour the entries. You, there are tools out there in various websites that, that, that will email you when these horses are in you. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but I, I, one could slip through. So I just am so excited. You know, you, you kind of hope in Christmas morning will come. Well, it's going to come when it does. So here we are, and we have both of these in. So without further ado, I am beyond belief excited to bet the number four British royalty. And it, you tell a bit of a story here, starting with the debut performance, did a stalking move swept wide and closed home late. So this one's really a great stalker from that. Came back, second performance. Sneaky, got caught a shoe to the head. On the replay, you can see as they're coming out of the shoe into the first turn, went really rank, and I really like dug into the replay itself and actually caught a shoe to the head and still ran very well. Horse was okay, thankfully, and sound coming out of it. So comes back to Keeneland in April, wet conditions, didn't like it at all, had the slow pace up front, just, you know what, let's pack it in, let's look for the next day. And then in at Churchill, just a tremendous, terrible trip. I mean, we could talk about it. It's in my write-up, all of the notes on it, but really was wrapped up the entire back or entire stretch drive and was still keeping on terms. And I love that the that this horse finished seven, four and a half lengths behind because it makes it look like eh, non-finished effort. This one wasn't really running, didn't have anything left in the tank, and still was trying to get something done even though wrapped up. So the horse has some talent to him. 
Um, and so I'm excited that this is the third off the layoff, which again, some of these are coming off of long layoffs anyways in this race. And we're going to get a heck of a price at 12 to one. And I think there's a little bit of speed in here for this one to close into at 12 to one. I mean, if we can get six to one, I'm happy on this horse. My top pick is the number four British royalty in this event. I think it's a very interesting selection. And you made two points I was going to make. One thing that's been a little tricky at Woodbine these first few days is trying to figure out how to deal with these layoff runners. British royalty, third race of the form cycle. That's got to be an edge. But I was also going to point out on Time Form US, there's a lot of pace in this race. Or at the very least, we can say that it's coded as having a fast pace. Meanwhile, when you look at the closing sectionals, British royalty, some of the best on offer. Very interesting pick by you. I'm glad you made me uh, talk about that race. And hopefully that's how we'll get our pick five started. The second leg of it will be race number nine. It's the grade three whimsical stakes. Phillies and mares four and up going six on the synthetic and i'm not going to steal your thunder i'm sure i like the same one as you but tell us about the other horse that's been in your uh, stable mail for a few months yeah the other one being number eight boardroom just ha- the horse i think we we went back and forth on twitter on wednesday evening with ellen j foxwood and some other fans of this horse and it's clear this one has heart um wasn't able to get the job done last time against Artie's princess who's in here today but Artie's princess kind of got away with a crime in that easy lead saved a little of the ground and boardroom was trying to move wide and do everything the hard way so today drawn outside again like almost a carbon copy of the last race but thankfully there's a lot of speed drawn in this race so i'm in the number eight boardroom gets first time lasix i think this horse has a really great chance of winning and the price might drift up but i i don't think so i think we're going to be in between with like a two to one five to two that feels like where the the money's going to go because there's two others in here that you may be talking about that may take some money and attention. Boardroom for me was definitely the pick. You made all the points, got the worst of it in terms of trips uh, with Artie's Princess last time, didn't break well, chased wide, adding Lasix and, and all the more pace to keep Artie honest. Boardroom, definitely the play for me. The other one I was interested in to use is actually a, a little bit of a price. Number six, our secret agent, at least a little bit of a price on the morning line. Just a one who's super consistent figure wise. And I thought was an interesting one to go ahead and use underneath. Did you have any more thoughts on this one, Drew, in terms of backups or anything like that? Yeah, I like the, I like the number six, our secret agent. I did not write this one up, but note that Emma Jane Wilson is really good about saving ground. And the number six may sit back off of it and get the pocket. But what's unbelievable to me, last year, if you were wide trying to make a run, you were done. Like, there was no good advantage to being wide. This last weekend, it didn't matter. It was almost a very, very neutral playing field. So plays very well into the hands of our top choice, number eight, boardroom. Watch Friday's, uh, hopefully this comes out in time, Friday's races, Go back and watch them. See if the inside is playing any more favorable. But from what I could tell, very even track, unlike last year, where the inside ground-saving trips were fantastic for those runners. So, again, the wide being a bit more even this year. Looking like 8-6, pretty much straight for both of us. Um, Let's move on to race number 10. We stay in the – well, we go back to the allowance ranks this time with these Phillies and Mares going five and a half on the synthetic. I like number nine beyond my budget, getting back to what I'm guessing is the best surface, and I'm hoping that the apparent pace in here will bring her stamina into play. I was a little bit worried about it being maybe a little bit sharp, but the more I think about it, the more I think about trips, I'm hoping she can sit mid-pack and finish past them all. I just had the nine. That was the only number uh, of particular interest for me. Drew, how do you see it? Uh, The number two, Muchacha. Um, I I think this one, we just actually talked about both of these horses that this one had lost to, our secret agent and boardroom in the prior race, trying to break the maiden for number two, Muchacha, and just couldn't quite get it done in the graded stakes ranks company of those type of horses. So today, or I guess we'll, we'll say on May 8th, went to Churchill, found the softer group, tended the hot pace, and was able to get clear, and pretty impressively. Today gets a similar spot. I wouldn't say that this competition is any that much steeper and should have a little bit of a pace edge in this group that doesn't look to have a ton of speed signed on. My second choice is with you for all the reasons you la- named above. And I- I'm also going to use the other Cassie runner, uh, feeling funny, just might be the speed of the speed and get away. Uh, but 
I don't like the long, long layoff, right? We've seen a lot of these in the November timeframe layoff. Uh, this one hasn't run since September. So a little hesitation there, but you know, I, I hate when I don't, you know, I identify who the, who's going to be loose on the lead and don't use that horse. Cause speed is such a dangerous weapon, especially on the all weather. I saw it a little differently than you just in that. I think there's plenty of pace. That's part of the reason why I think it could set up nicely for beyond my budget, but muchacha, Last time it was kind of a stalk and pounce job. I can definitely see the case for her. We'll see how she classes up with these after winning at that maiden claiming level. But I can definitely, I can definitely see your case for it. Nine for me, the two, the main pick for Drew with the nine and the eight as backups in race number 10. Let's move on to race number 11. We've got three and up maiden special weights going five on the synthetic. And Drew, I'll send it right back to you. Yeah, I'm on a horse that, you know, we talked about this last time, doing trainer changes from a very notable barn over to a little bit of an unknown barn um, with a Cassie runner as well that went over to an unknown barn. Fired fairly well. I think you got good value on that horse to Marseille, I believe is the horse's name. And number three, Union Colonel kind of fits that form a little bit. Um, Has only had one running under the new Donald McRae. Um, barn. I haven't heard of them, but I'm assuming they're uh, a decent uh, establishment. May, may be part of the ownership group because I'm seeing D Mac, Donald Mac Ray, maybe, maybe. Uh, but we get two equipment changes, has shown some ability to put some speed out there as well. So at the five for long distance, that is what I'm looking for in a horse here. So number three, Union Colonel. I do have a backup in the number 11, Lord of Legends. Again, not not being creative here, might just be the best of the speed if can get away and fire well. I like Union Colonel as well. Just looked very obvious to me. Has among the best numbers. You mentioned the equipment changes going out for a gelding is the first time. And on the stats, uh, McCray Barn does does well in these uh, in these type of situations uh, with new acquisitions and and off of these kind of breaks so i feel like it's all systems go i think we're both gonna stick with union colonel in race number three i didn't i didn't have anything else that that leapt off the page to the point where it was worth uh calling out so we'll just leave it there in race number 11 unless you had another one you were thinking of uh of mentioning to include no i wouldn't mind it if you spread either you know i could see especially in the pick five uh doing kind of a single single uh, get skinny and then do like an all for the base bet because it is a 20 cent minimum bet. So you could get pretty spready with an affordable budget, which is what I'm always looking for. I'm not trying to fire four figures on the weekends. And, you know, obviously, if, even if you do that, you can then come back and play the ones you like for, you know, a dollar or five times the base uh, amount and and try to get involved that way. Just to, just one one idea of how to attack with the low minimums if you you know, I, I think in the balance of life, as we talked about many times, I'm not a fan, but there are situations where you, if you're going to be, be involved in those type of pools, you want to play them to your advantage. Let's talk about the nightcap, Drew. Three and up, Philly and Mare, Maidens going six and a half on the Woodbine turf. i make you kick it off one more time so I can ask you, how are we going to get paid? I've got a smirk on my face because here we go again on 20 to one shots like it was last year. It feels good. It like, feels like getting back on a bike a little bit. <laughs> Nothing really got me excited, right? A big field searching through it, searching through. We got a couple other A's and couldn't find anything and went back to watch the number 11 elusive societies run. And for whatever reason, the jockey decided to just pull the horse out of the race in the first 100, 200 yards and then do a bit of a drive around the race where and it, 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 it was a very questionable tactic. It felt like maybe that wasn't the goal all along, and they were hoping to get one more run in before, uh, unfortunately, Woodbine had to shut down. So uh, the number 11 elusive society gets to change over to uh, the turf. Um, so first time there. It might be in the thick of it where – I think last time was a bit just out of it. So I think there's a sneaky price to be had in here. And one other thing with the Woodbine meet right now, an experiment I'm working on before I say this, is workouts to me on the tab, everyone seems to have bullets. Everyone seems to be working well. And my thought is uh, maybe the trainers are just having to sharpen these horses up as they've been on such long layoffs, right? Maybe they're designing a three to four month layoff not the long extension that we had in June. So 
there might be an opportunity to make some money here by ignoring or understanding where those bullets are really significant and not just trying to keep a horse fit. And the mo I'm looking at the most recent work um, in June 12th. That one is significant to me because it's so close in proximity. Uh, that might be a signal in some of the noise of those other bullet workouts that you see throughout horses work tabs to say this one is ready to fire and is a four-year-old coming off of a, a big layoff. But again, some of these are three-year-olds with form that's been exposed. So at 20 to one, I'm trying to make a case to myself that Fukumoto may be able to give this one the best chance it can at what will be a bomb price. I mean, what, what better way to be alive in the pick five to that? I like the sound of it. And you've given out many live uh, 20 to one shots here before. They don't all win, but an inordinate amount of them hit the board, I have to say. And often ones that make me shake the head, make shake my head and say, what is what is Drew thinking here? This horse has no chance. And then I watch the race and here comes Drew's horse zooming on the outside. So I'm I'm throwing I'm I'm done trying to pose you on the on some of these wild long shots. And you make a very cogent case for this one. I'll give you my two and then I'll come back to you because I'm guessing you are going to want backups in what looks like a competitive race but i thought that the two la bestia came out uh, pretty well on numbers for a barn that does well off breaks looked like a horse that was moving forwardly to me i wanted to have on side the eight candies dream another i wanted to include off numbers especially if she's improved while making the leap from three to four that's something else you can say about the top one as well that's another thing about these layoffs that's tricky when it's the horse is going from three to four, especially you, you can bake in some improvement here if you don't think they're going to need the race. So it's, I was going to go two eight and try to get out that way. I'll be throwing in your 11 as a B uh, any others you want me to note down for your uh, in the money plus uh, notes feature for folks that don't know what I'm talking about. We send out a little pricey, a little recap of all the picks to plus members as well as original content. Like uh, I think I mentioned before, going to be doing a show on Sunday morning, Father's Day special on the Santa Anita pick six force out. Uh, Jake Blessy, Jake. Oh my goodness. Jake Blessy, Blake, Jesse. Sorry, Blake. And I are going to be getting together on that one early. Anyway, if you want to learn more about that in the money podcast.com slash plus, I get all the plugs in when the business guy's on. I'm really good at it when he's on. It's funny. Um, anyway, any backups for you in this last yeah. race of Woodbine? Yeah, the guy who approves the dinner expense reports. Yeah, you got to make sure that uh, <laughs> they're getting them all in. So I, the other horse I'm going to use here is uh, number 13, Rookie Girl. Chase the speeds kind of wrapped up in the last bit. Gets the drop in class, right? We can, can, can be a bit tactical. Uh, maybe just needed the break here on this one. And Cassie's pretty good at firing uh, off the layoff here. And uh, Kimura's riding pretty well. So, um, you know, ironically, the or coincidentally, the 11 and 13 are switching jockeys. So we're going to get the best of it one way. If I were to go through and say, who are my backups, which I didn't include in the write-up, I'm going to use the one, the two that you did, um, the three, um, I, and then the eight that you said as well. And then we'll use the A's as the 11 and 13. Because if I'm alive at this point, I want to make sure that we're going to get paid. Uh, I know some strategies, right, get narrow so then you can hedge elsewhere to understand where your equity is going to be going. But at this stage, we have such strong opinions in the early legs. I don't want to be sitting here saying, well, I, I kind of wish I did or something along those lines. So it's, it's a super narrow ticket. So it makes sense to do what you said. Get spready and then come back and play the ones you like more. I have zero problem with that in this spot. Fantastic. Good stuff. Good stuff. Not that you need my uh, approbation when it comes to this. I'm about the farthest thing you can find from the EV police. Drew, thank you very much. We hope you have a fantastic weekend, and uh, we'll see you right here next week. All right, we'll see you soon, PTEV. <laughs> have a good one. That's going to do it for this edition of the show. want to thank today's guest, JK, of course. We'll also thank Spencer Lugenbuehl and John Pinder. Props one more time to Spencer for making it to 100 shows. I've seen a lot of horse racing podcasts come and go. That's something to get to 100. Uh, awesome stuff. Make sure you check out the fine work he's doing over there, as well as the fine work everybody's doing on the In The Money Media Network. You want to help us out. One of the best things you can do, well, one of the best things you can do, tell more people who like horse racing to check us out. Uh, and then get them to go to iTunes or wherever they get their podcasts and subscribe to the In The Money Media Network. And heck, if you really want to go the extra mile, subscribe to all the feeds, rate and uh, review us, do all that fun stuff. We really, really appreciate it. Last but not least, in terms of guests, we got to thank Drew Coatney, doing a great job for our friends at Woodbine. So excited that they've got this new season 
um, going underway. It took a minute to get there, but we're making up for lost time in our partnership with Woodbine. Can't wait till we get the chance to go up there and uh, and visit one more time. Uh, who else? We got to thank uh, Ten Strike Racing. Uh, we talked about the TRF before our founding partners. What about our other founding partners? Ten Strike Racing. Always love to root for the purple and black. Thanks, though, most of all to all of you for listening, for making these shows so much fun to do. Reach out to us. Twitter at Looms Boldly in the money podcast.com. There's a contact page on there. Give us feedback. We have uh, just popped up this listener survey. Um, you'll hear a little uh, you heard a little thing about that uh, in the pre-roll. And uh, we re- really appreciate if you go to that in the money podcast.com slash survey on that. That's going to do it. Uh, this show has been a production of in the money media. Our business manager is Drew Coatney. Our chief creative officer is Jonathan Kinchin. Uh, AJ Wash in the chair uh, sitting in for our man, uh, producer Craig, who's, uh, who's out today. I'm Peter Thomas Fornatal. May you win all your photos. <laughs>